The unique geography of the Pioneer Valley offers some of the most beautiful vistas in western Massachusetts, the result of a geological history that also bestows the valley with a certain vulnerability. The breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea some 250 million years ago resulted in a series of rifts that could have brought the shores of the Atlantic a good 200 miles further inland. One such rift became what we are now familiar with as the Connecticut River Valley. The ensuing ice ages of the past 200 million years etched out the surface of the valley by way of their mighty glaciers, often leaving behind a magnificent glacial lake, which most recently drained off into the Atlantic some 12,000 years ago. Life at the bottom of a glacial lake has its merits. Incredibly rich soil fed by silt deposits from the meandering Connecticut River offered prime farming real estate for early American colonists settling in the valley. But it also has its hazards, most notably an extensive and thickly settled floodplain. The city of Northampton and neighboring Hadley are particularly vulnerable to the rising waters of the Connecticut. The earthen dikes, which have been a prominent feature of the surrounding landscape for centuries, are the first lines of defense in the event of flooding. But they were no match for the mother of all floods. Yeah, I was, no, wait a minute, I was going to be, yeah, I was six, going to be seven, the end of the year. So I went out first with another boat, and the other boat was taking the pictures. But some of them, you could look in the windows of the house when you're buying a boat, you could see furniture floating around in them. They didn't have time to get it out. And the people that lived downstairs, there was a piano in, they had downstairs, and you could hear the piano from the current of the river. You could hear the piano banging against the walls. I remember as I was standing on the dike with my father, and after he was holding, he was holding my hand, you could see the water almost right to the top of the dike, and he began to wonder. You know what I mean? It was, it was scary. It was for, you know, a kid that age. It was hectic for a while. And we were out of the house a couple of weeks we had to be, until everything dried out. And, well, it didn't dry out. It took a long time. Load, you know, there's mud and silt and everything else. It was in the walls, on the walls, in the floors. Yeah, it was just, I just remember the water when it kept rising. It wasn't blocked, uh, Mill River wasn't blocked, it was the Connecticut River. I, if I remember correctly, it could have been an ice jam. There was uh, a lot of ice in it, you know, it was backing up. We got down through East Hampton somehow and went down to uh, where Dorman's was, there used to be a bar room down there, and that was flooded there. But you could see from an area there all the ice out in the river. It was amazing. Where it was down in the meadow, you go over on South Street and like Lyman Road and Columbus Avenue there, and you look down, and all you could see was water. You know, it was like a huge lake. This was the flood area, that and Bridge Street and the meadows. The meadows, of course, was flooded tremendously there. That road going, as you can see there, to uh, down to the Hoyoke Group 5 there was way underwater. It caused a lot of damage here. The flood of 36 caused $400,000 worth of damage in Northampton alone. Today, that figure would be closer to $5 million. The controversial issue of elevating the heights of the dikes again raised its head, as it had dozens of times throughout the floods of centuries past. Nevertheless, the unprecedented devastation of the 36 flood prompted the Army Corps of Engineers to immediately begin enlarging the dikes bordering the fickle Connecticut. In addition, the course of the Mill River, itself a source of considerable damage, was diverted entirely. For those living in the immediate floodplain, however, 
history remains unchanged. With as much certainty as April showers, the threat of flooding endures. A unique testament to the transformative power of Mother Nature is this painting of the Connecticut coursing along its path near Northampton. A few short years after the completion of Thomas Cole's now famous work, the potent flood of 1842 retreated, leaving behind the curious shape of an isolated oxbow lake. The river shaped our valley and continues to shape it today. We feel the force of its natural beauty, but we should also remember its destructive power is just below the surface.